<laughs> Coach Lockway, are you fired up for signing day? I am fired up for signing day. It's uh, always an exciting day. It's a uh, recruiting's a long process. It's a uh, it's a thirteen month ordeal. We're we're one month in already to the junior process for next year. So it's nice to get to this day. There's always kind of nerves on. Let's make sure nothing goes crazy. Nothing changes. It's all good. And, and honestly, some of these guys have been committed since September, since August that you can't talk about. And so you're right. just kind of sitting here going. All right, finally. You know, it, it's bad enough to wait for Christmas, and that's like about a month. This sometimes like three months you're waiting to be able to talk about this. And so we're here today. I'm fired up. Putting it up there with Christmas. That's pretty high praise. Yeah. It is a long process. What does it take to get to a signing day? I mean, it. you mentioned it's a lot of work and time and things put into it. What did it take to get to this day? Oh, it's a, I don't know how much time we got. It's a, it's a long Long process, um, and really it's credit to our assistant coaches. They do a phenomenal job. Coach Needham, our recruiting coordinator, has a plan that's laid out. And it to, to be successful, you have to do the work. I think it's very much like farming. Like you don't just get to harvest a great crop. You're like, okay, well, I got to prepare the soil. I got to plant the soil. I got to nurture it. I got to build it. It's the same thing in recruiting. And so it starts with, you know, in the last month, we've watched probably 3,000 juniors. And it's trying to figure out, okay, well then which ones actually are fits here, you know, athletically. And then it's okay. Which ones are fits culturally, which ones that are actually interested in us and then building the relationship. And so this huge kind of funnel narrows itself down over the course of 13 months. And so it's a lot of work. It's a lot of conversations or that's texting phone conversations in, in these worlds it's zoom it's FaceTime of doing those things and building relationships so that, a young man does feel comfortable coming here and understanding that, you know what, this isn't his home, but it's going to be his home away from home for the next four to five years. And then hopefully he walks out of here and feels like for the next 40 years or more, this is home. There's a piece that is home that he can always come back to. There's nostalgia here. There's memories here. There's friends that he took from here, experiences both on the field, off the field. And, and be able to do that, we have to have guys come here and experience it. And so a lot of these recruits, they, they did their due diligence. They were here two, three, four times on our campus, making trips as a, as a family, spending time with our players, with our coaches, watching all the people that interact with our program. It's not even just even in the athletic department. It's the relationship and admissions with someone that gave them the tour when they go to the dining center and seeing the people there and interact. And so all of those things are what make family. All those things are create a feel that this is a community that they want to be a part of. And, and so it is a group effort. It's not just, it's not just me with a great sales pitch. It's, it's us as a program. It's us as a campus. It's us as a community that really are selling themselves to these young men to have this be part of their journey, part of their story for the next however many years of their life. And so it's fun when you finally get guys that want to be a part of that. And now like today, we get to talk about them. Today is a different day. We do get to talk about these individuals, but as you said, it's a, it's a funnel and, and there's a family and there's a lot of individuals you start with to become part of that culture, part of the Dragon Football family. How do you get down to the, what you need as far as a football program? You know, you look at your roster, you look at the senior graduates, you, you look at all the needs that you want to increase depth in or skills in or whatever. How do you get to how many we're going to announce and, and get excited about today? How do you get to that number? And what are you kind of looking for, especially with this specific class? Yeah, for sure. There's a there's a piece that obviously there's a, you know, there's a, a, a budget, so to say, like everyone's got a family budget. There's a salary cap board is what we call it. But there's positions like we're, we're going to have 250 people here. Like we have 110 spots. That's what we have. Those are what we're recruiting to. And so it is a little bit fluid of, well, who do we have on our team? Who do we don't have on our team? Well, oh, well, this year we need three linebackers. Well, last year we only needed one. Well, you know, sometimes there is a little bit of dynamic of, well, oh, I wish I was a year earlier at that position when there was more of a need or whatever. And so we're trying to balance those, but we're also trying to be forward thinking in the sense of, well, this is maybe what they are now. But what, what could they be? What could they become? Where could they maybe play differently? And so one of the things we do at our camps, we have guys that maybe only play offense in high school. Great. But you know what? 
we ask them to play defense at our camp too, to see how do they handle a different challenge? How do they handle a position move? Could we recruit them there if it doesn't going to work, if it's not going to work out offensively? And so we're trying to create as many opportunities to get the right guys in the door, in the family, and then the spots can work themselves out. So there are some areas that we kind of recruit that we're like, you know what? They're dragons, they're fits. I don't know exactly where they're going to fit right now, but they're going to make it somewhere. And let's just bet on them and trust them that the path is going to present itself as they go. They're going to play themselves into being on the football field. And so it's kind of a back and forth of being able to think from different angles, you know, recruiting coordinators, perception. We have our defensive line coaches watching our offensive linemen to say, yeah, is this a recruit that we think we'd want? Because, hey, maybe he could play defense. And so we have we we try not to be siloed. We really try and have an open mind and, and see things from all different perspectives of possibility. And that's kind of how we get to this point. And obviously, you know, we get to this point because they got to pick us. This isn't the NFL. We don't get to draft them. We're like, hey, here's the opportunity. Here's how we sure. see you fitting in. Here's who we are. I think one of the things that we try and be really consistent about is everything we talk about in recruiting, every experience that you have in recruiting with us, we want to be the same as when you're going to be here. So we don't want it all this different crazy stuff of, hey, you know what, we're going to treat you one way in recruiting, but hey, when you get here, things are different. Now it's, no, it's like, so we're very cognizant from the very beginning. We're here to help you make a great decision to learn about the program and find what the right fit is. I'm not going to waste an hour of your time playing dress up, putting you into all these uniforms and smoke and mirrors and taking pictures. That is not going to help you get to a big boy decision of where's the next place, the next place that you need to be for four to five years it's going to impact your entire life and so why because we don't do those things with our players and so we want you to have a consistent experience from the time you start with us in recruiting till you know what till you walk out the door it doesn't mean that we're not going to celebrate with you and and be happy for you and want you to succeed and help but we're going to help you find the right place now in recruiting but we're going to help you find the right path while you're here on the football field off the football field out into life and guess what when it's when we're done here it doesn't stop. The players that we coach are still in relationship with us. They're still moving forward. They're still part of the Dragon family. You, you met, we're talking about fr- incoming freshmen here, the senior class. You, you're talking about juniors, the long process. When you dip your toe into, and I know everybody likes talking about it, but in the transfer portal, like when, when is it the right time for Dragons football, everybody has a different answer. What is it the right time for you guys to start dipping your toe into the transfer portal and looking for somebody uh, in that method? I think it's a great question. It, we haven't been a transfer type program since I've been here. We've really focused on high school. You develop the whole student athlete through the process and, and they kind of grow and mature and develop and, and they're by their fourth and fifth year, they're Dragons through and through and they love being, they never think about being anywhere else. And so a year ago, we probably didn't look at the transfer portal at all. We just monitored it. This year, we probably took a look at it, and but really, it was strategic. You ask, what's the best fit for us? Well, the fit is, who are guys that we recruited in the past that are now in the portal, and they're like, oh, I made a terrible mistake. We want to be back. Or a guy that's in the portal because he's teammates with one of our current players in high school is like, hey, sounds like it's a lot better there because what I got is not what I want. I need to find a better fit. And so it's trying to find those strategic matchups that happen like that or from a re- our recruiting area you know they, they're going to come here they understand what snow is they're going to be okay with the, being cold like that you have to do that great they signed up well guess what it turns to winter at some point and so it's trying to find those right fits for us and that's what we found the right fits are and we haven't attacked it very much but that's how we've attacked it of what are the connections and how can that fit you, you mentioned something there uh, of the kid trying to figure out uh, the young adult, young man, figuring out what they want and what they're looking for. How, how do you help these potential dragons or just a person who's trying to figure that out? What advice would you give them as they go through and navigate all these different coaches who are in their ear? You mentioned a few things. But how does that individual and that family figure out what they want? Yeah, you know, there, there's a couple things that that I bring up to them through the process. And one of them is I ask them to think about from a from a team standpoint. I don't care if it's your football team, your AAU basketball team, your little league team when you're in third grade. What have been the teams that you've been a part of that really 
have been your best teams? And why did you like being part of that team? Was it because you got ice cream after the game? Was it because you won? Was it because, you know, your buddies were there? You know, there's a lot of different reasons and combination of reasons, but why, why have you had your favorite team? What's your favorite class and why? Is it because of the subject or is it because of the people in the class? Is it because of the teacher, the environment? What are those things that make a class in your high school one of your favorite? Because you probably have a class that you like, like maybe Spanish, that you're really not fired up about Spanish, but you love going to Spanish. Why? Probably because of the teacher, probably because your buddies are in the class, whatever it is. And so I ask him to think about those experiences and try and draw out what makes it special and then finding those in your football experience as you go through. And then one of the other things I ask him is, hey, flat out, what makes football special to you? you look through those lenses. Does this place have it? Because if it doesn't have it, it's really hard to believe that you're going to get a special experience here. And it can be different. I'm not going to be, we're not going to be 35 different things for 35 different people. Here's who we are. Right. Here's the things that are special to us and they're important to us. And we put time into doing these really well. But if that's not what makes football special to you, this isn't the right place. But now if that's what makes football special to you, this is where you should be. And so look through those lenses of, I'm not going to have a special football experience if they don't have it there. It's just, it's not going to work, but if they have it, it's important to them and they do it really well. Hey, things are going to work out. I know the decision is not always about football, but if the football part gets right, guess what? Home doesn't seem that far away. 20 degrees doesn't seem that cold. 6 a.m. doesn't seem that early to get up for a workout. You're probably going to be able to take care of the rest of the parts of your life that get you to a degree and get you into the next phase successfully. It's interesting how, how to build that self-awareness throughout this process when you're inundated with all the mailers and all the communication and all the offers and how, how a dollar doesn't equal the same dollar over here as it does over there and all those different factors to simplify it into the question of what are you looking for? What do you want in your next part of your life? And I'd take that even uh, it, a little bit further. To to, okay, do it. It's then. maybe not what you want necessarily. What do you need? Fair. I don't want all these things, but what do I need to be successful? I'm different. And sometimes but not everyone I, has that humility to say, or or the awareness to say, I need this kind of structure or I need this kind of freedom or whatever their thing is. It yeah, that doesn't I, come naturally to an eight, 17, 18 year old all the time. Some are special and understand it and think about okay. it. But how do you shake? that out of them in well, those the nicest are, possible way. Those are things that we try and talk about on all our recruiting visits of you know, giving them those things to think about, thinking about, okay, every everybody needs something different. And I flat out, I tell them in our junior visit, like, here's the things that are important to us. You know what? Turnover thrones, you get an interception, you get to sit on a throne and everyone cheers for you, you put a crown. That's great for some programs, but not our program, because you know what? It's not just about one person. Somebody helped you get that interception. A defensive lineman forced it. Somebody maybe rattled the quarterback earlier. Hey, guess what? There's a scout team member that made a play earlier in the week at practice that helped you get ready for that. Or you know what? The strength coach helped push you in the weight room to be bigger, stronger, faster, and make this play. Or you know what? Hey, let's go back a little further. How about the junior high coach in your middle school that said, hey, why don't you come out for football? Why aren't you doing this? You could be good. Well, if it weren't for him, you're not sitting in that throne. If it weren't for your family getting you to this point of importance of a college degree, you're not sitting in this throne. So we don't have enough thrones for everybody to be in there, but we need to bring everybody into that spotlight. We're not trying to one person hog the spotlight. It's how many more people should be in this spotlight with me succeeding right now. And, and we try and hit those things from the very beginning. And I'll tell you, the ones that maybe don't get it or don't like that, they don't end up here because we don't have what they're looking for. And that's okay. They're going to be happier somewhere else. But the ones that that resonates to, they're a place that they keep coming back to two times, three times, four times. They're a guy that we're talking about today. That's a part of the dragon football family. And, and that's the fun part. It's not just the individual and the family figuring those things out. It's you and your program who's been together a long time and here a long time figuring also those things out to be able to answer those questions of, is this the right fit for all of us? It is a win for our program, a win for you and your family, and then it's going to be a win for MSUM. So let's talk about some of those uh, individuals for this class specifically. Uh, what were the needs looking at this group, looking at, uh, you know, you mentioned linebackers once, what were the needs for this group? And, you know, maybe break it down offense, defense, looking at the names on our list 
uh, for signing day. What did you get and how fired up were you about it? Yeah, I think overall the biggest thing was making sure that we're increasing team speed. I think if you look at how our conference is really evolving into a, especially with the teams in the north part of the division, it's a spread, throw the football, play in space, and and you got to be on top of speed and athleticism. I think that was definitely something we were looking for um, from a standpoint of skill positions, both offensively and de- defensively. That was important. I think um, within the trenches, that's always a, a place that that you got to win, and and it's not always size, but we tried to get a balance of size but we really tried to get a balance of scrappy competitiveness, um, guys that are able to move people, run blocking, offensive line-wise, I'm speaking, but the same thing defensively, like trying to find motors. And and sometimes I would say a a motor, a guy willing to play hard consistently, play after play relentlessly, you know what, trumps maybe size and measurables in this class. And we've seen it with some of the guys that for us, that's, they've been successful. If you look at, at, Abe playing on the defensive line last year. Abe was a guy that had a tremendous motor coming out of high school, a tremendous motor last year on the football field. Like there's a connection to why he's making plays and maybe he doesn't have the exact measurables that people are looking for, but he's got the production because he's got that it factor within him. So we really tried to find those members, especially in the, in the trenches. And I think that's the, we put those together. If if you tried to narrow it down, that's what it was. Yeah, what, you mentioned trends in the league playing spread fast. How do you adjust what your personnel to to compete against those kind of offenses and, and defenses you see throughout the year? Well, and that's the thing that I think Coach Courier Jesse did a fabulous job on a couple of years ago, really transitioning our defense into one that you know could defend against the spread better. And so we kind of slid from a a four-man line to a three-man, kind of a hybrid between a four-man line and a three-man line to allow us to get more guys in space to defend. And it, you know, really kind of came out. We played, you know, three teams in a row. And I think those three teams, all of them were in the top 15 passing in the country, that stretch. And so we're like, okay, it kind of evolved from a nickel package to this piece that he's really put together as a, as a brainchild that's kind of different. It's unique. It's helped fit what we have and the guys that we have and how we're we'll able to be successful and kind of blended some philosophies there. And so that's been the, what we've really tried to be able to do defensively. And I think when we're in situations like that with in against those type teams and those personnel sets, we've been able to be extremely successful in comparison to where we have been in the past. How does this group help Dragon football get better? You know what, this group, it, it's its every day, right? Like, we, we can't win the game, the, the first game of the year right now because it's not its not September. But right. we can win today, right? And that's the only thing we got control of is today. And so for us, it's making sure we're attacking every opportunity. Right now, It's whether it's in the weight room, whether it's doing their individual skill instruction, whether it was like we did this morning with the team meeting and being able to have small groups that come together and build the relationships and the chemistry and start to get on the same page of, hey, who are we this year as a team? This Dragon football team, who are we? Different than any other teams. There's going to be some things that are similar. There's some things in our DNA. But the guys in this room are different. Who are we going to be? Why are we going to win? How are we going to buy into that, believe in that? And so we're going to talk about those things and build the relationships together. You have to put time into building relationships, to building chemistry, to creating family. You don't become a family by throwing a red T-shirt on and writing family on there. You got to do more than that. And if you're going to have guys that build into that and, and buy into that, and that's going to be a strength, then you have to put time into it. And I think if you look at us, that's one of the things that can be our strengths of being successful. It is the bonds together. It is the chemistry. It is the fact that, you know what, we don't have people flying out of here left and right to the transfer portal because they love each other on the team. They love the coaches. They love the campus and the community, and they want to be part of the program and see it and push it to a, a bigger and better place. And well, We've done some time connecting those guys together, making them feel a sense of pride in what it is to be a dragon, what it is to be a member of this football program. And so we need to leverage those strengths to push us over the edge in tight games to be able to win when things get difficult. We we rely on each other and we're all better together. No one's as good or as smart as not one of us is as good as small or as smart as all of us. And so we need to be able to do it and do it together. Well, thank you for the in-depth look at uh, signing day, this class, philosophies behind the scenes of how this day comes about and things you're trying to work on and build. 
uh, you know, appreciate your time and, and all the different uh, insights you gave us today. And good luck as we get these guys on campus and put them to work in camp and they get to see it real deal, real speed, fun kind of stuff. So thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you.